I did my project on Truman Lau's sculpture, Effigy Bird Form. Here's a picture of it in the top left here. It is 20 feet wide and 12 feet long, which is about two basketball hoops stacked on top of one another. Getting into the introduction here, this is Truman Lau. Again, his work that I'll be covering today is his giant aluminum bird he created. It is now located atop of Observatory Hill in Madison, Wisconsin. And its purpose of his artwork is to reflect the loss of indigenous burial mounds, not only in Wisconsin, but in the United States as well. Getting into the background of the artist, Truman Lau. He was born in January 19th, 1994, and passed away in March 30th, 2019. He was part of the Ho-Chunk tribe, and during his lifetime was a sculptor, installation artist, professor at UW-Madison, and also served as the curator of contemporary art for the Smithsonian National Museum of the American Indian. His artwork often employed a minimalist or modernist aesthetic. By influencing his Ho-Chunk background, he was able to stay true to the materials he worked with. By adding traditional arts and crafts his parents often practiced, including ribbon work, beadwork, and backistry. Now getting into a little bit of the history of his art form, oh, excuse me, of his art piece. Before permanently being placed in Madison, it was originally by the helicopter landing pad at the White House. Lau's goal in having his art here was to remind former President of the United States, Bill Clinton, that Native Americans were here way before America was colonized by European countries. Since then, the sculpture is now located atop of Observatory Hill on UW-Madison's campus. Lau wanted to be here because he's on Dijop land, part of the ancestral homeland of the Ho-Chunk people. Dijop is the Ho-Chunk name for Madison, meaning four lakes. The Ho-Chunk people had constructed effigy mounds all around Madison and the entire state of Wisconsin. These are burial mounds, piles of dirt built in the shape of spiritual symbols or animals. Around the United States, thousands have been destroyed either by accident, through farming, or construction. At one time, there were at least five mounds located on Observatory Hill. However, there's only two remaining today. One is a bird, and the other is a two-tailed water spirit. So here's another angle of his art piece. And then, I know it's kind of hard to see, but here's um, the explanation of the art. And the bottom right there is his Ho-Chunk name. So getting into the details and the function of the art. Like I said, the aluminum bird is 20 feet wide and 12 feet long and weighs over 900 pounds. Lau created the artwork with help from Hooper Custom Metals, a company located in DeForest, Wisconsin, a city just 15 minutes away from the capital. The company helped Lau weld together solid aluminum rods to form the sculpture's woven design. Lau asked that everyone who helped in the construction of the bird were to sign the base of it. He wanted this because he believed everyone who contributed should get some recognition. The bird is also welded in a way to convey an image of the bird about to take flight. As previously stated, the art piece is made up of solid aluminum rods that were meticulously welded together to form a bird preparing to leave the ground. Joe Ortel, a former Beloit College art history professor who wrote a book about Lau's work, said, 
Lao wanted to convey the number of mounds that had been destroyed over time and create a memorial for those that were lost. In Ortel's book, he has another quote stating, At the same time, the sculpture is an indication that indigenous people who lived here were really in touch with the land and environment, creating shapes out of the earth. These here are just a uh, couple pictures of Lao working with the Hooper Company out of DeForest. I can see here on the right, they're welding it together. And then on the left, it looks like they're just sorting out the pieces they got there. Okay, so now transitioning into the last slide, which is course themes and how his artwork relates to our course themes. Let's start off with survivance. So his entire goal of having the art piece at the White House is an example of survivance because he wanted to show that Native Americans are still around today and aren't going anywhere. The effigy bird form is an example of how Lao used modern style in his artwork using aluminum to symbolize the vitality of the Ho-Chunk people. By using these modern materials to build the bird, Lao suggests that Ho-Chunks are not only a thing of the past, but are still here, thriving. The bird is not only memorial to the past, but also recognizes being in the present and what the future has to hold. Moving on to cultural identity theme. By adding Ho-Chunk techniques to his artwork, he's able to stay in touch with his roots. Also, wanting to have his work in Madison, the original homelands of the Ho-Chunk people, truly shows how connected he is to his identity. According to UW-Madison's Director of Tribal Relations, Truman was a beloved, inspiring teacher and mentor whose work is deeply rooted in his Ho-Chunk heritage. This is just a little bit more of his artwork. So that's Truman again in the top left. Uh, as you can see in this middle one especially, is his use of backistry in his work. You can see how each stick is woven together to create that art piece. Another trait of his work is the materials he uses. So for the majority of all of his work, he uses materials native to Wisconsin whether that be leather, hide that he gets off of animals, or sticks and plants, etc. 